In the previous <coughs> class we have discussed about the static friction and their different situation. Now uh, in this class uh, we are going to talk about the kinetic friction. So this friction starts acting when uh, there is a relative motion between the surfaces in contact that is body moves uh, uh, with respect to each other then this force will act. For example, uh, here an inclined uh, plane is shown on which a body is placed and body is in motion that is this body is moving. So uh, kinetic friction will act in this direction. Similarly in this case uh, on this uh, because this, these are in contact so kinetic friction will act on this body because body is moving in this direction so kinetic friction will be in this direction. Again this is the another situation shown where uh, this body is moving with the velocity at a1 and this body is moving with a2 so kinetic friction is uh, between these surfaces will act and which given by fk and there uh, another situation is shown uh, here the body, uh, applied force is acting in this direction that body we are moving in this direction this body is moving in this direction and this body is moving in this direction so different situation is on different body and uh, if we draw the free body diagram then um, free body diagram of one body will be like this and free body diagram of second body will be like this here another condition is shown another uh, situation is shown uh, this body is moving with uh, acceleration a2 and this body is moving with acceleration a1 now if a1 is greater than a2 then the uh, first body will have uh, uh, this free body diagram and second body have this free body diagram why will we like this because a1 is greater than a2 then this the surface of this body is moving uh, in this direction with respect to this so kinetic friction on this body will be in this direction which is here it is shown and normal reaction like uh, perpendicular to the surface due to this body on one body we have uh, represented with it uh, n1 and the weight of the body will be acting in this direction now we consider second body now second for second body there is two surfaces in contact first one is this and first one is this so there will be two kinetic friction so let's discuss what is now if you first see this situation in this uh, in this contact surface because this body is moving in this direction so contact in this contact uh, the force of uh, kinetic friction will be in this direction this is shown here uh, written as a uh, uh, fk okay and the weight of body will be in downward direction here it is shown uh, we have represented it as a f dash k uh, the kinetic friction in this surface as f dash k and uh, now see this surface now because this body is uh, uh, because this uh, force is this acceleration is greater than this because this body is moving with respect to this body in this direction it means that this body is moving with respect to this body in this direction so force of kinetic friction on this surface will be in this direction which is it is shown fk because same force of friction acts in the surfaces so the if, if this is this also this is also fk and this is also fk and uh, normal reaction uh, due to one it will be n1 and due to this surface normal reaction on body 2 will be n2 so three body diagram in here is shown and uh, similarly if uh, a1 it will be less than a2 then the free body diagram will be like this as shown in the figure this force opposes relative motion between the surfaces in contact but can never reverse the direction of motion the magnitude of kinetic friction is given by fk equals to mu k into n here k is for kinetic you can only write f or then you have to remember that this uh, f represents the kinetic friction for convenience we have written it fk or here the coefficient of friction we have written mu k that can 
coefficient of kinetic friction. Then F k equals to mu k to n, where n is the normal reaction or con normal contact force, or mu k is the coefficient of kinetic friction and depends upon the nature of surfaces in contact. Uh, coefficient always depends on the uh, surfaces in contact. Now, F k must be less than equal to F l or equals to uh, maximum static friction F s max or equals to mu s n that is fk must be less than equal uh, must be less than mu s into n not equal so mu k into n is less than mu s into n hence mu k is less than mu s so coefficient of kinetic friction is always less than coefficient of static friction now we so it is uh, on the diagram this is this axis shows the applied force and this is on a, a friction force on this axis so when we increase the applied force the force of uh, static friction will increase and a time reach when the static friction will be maximum and that is called a limiting friction uh, limiting static friction or fs max and again we increase the value of force then the body will come in motion uh, during this, that is during this uh, situation, the body is in rest and when we apply, when we increase the force, uh, uh, after that, the body comes in motion and uh, the friction on body uh, uh, are acting is uh, kinetic friction, which is shown in the diagram here. This is the limiting friction, that is uh, uh, maximum static friction which is greater than the uh, kinetic friction. Uh, there is two point that is uh, Fs is always less than Fk in general and uh, Fl that is limiting friction force which is called uh, maximum static force is uh, always greater than kinetic friction. Now contact force or resultant of contact forces is. The resultant of normal reaction or normal contact perpendicular to the plane of motion and force of friction parallel to the plane of motion is called resultant of contact force or simply contact force. So when we ask that contact force then it will be the vector sum of normal reaction and friction force that is this force is uh, the sum of uh, normal contact force and friction force. So it is uh, uh, when we, um, uh, there is difference between normal contact force, this represents normal contact force and when we ask only contact force then this force will be contact force because this is the sum of normal contact force and friction force. Now, if friction is absent, that is this force is absent, then normal reaction or normal contact force will be equal to the contact force. So, we have called co contact force from the uh, triangle law of addition. The magnitude of uh, contact force uh, here, we are representing contact force as R equals to under root N square plus Fs square. That is normal contact uh, force square plus friction force square and in limiting condition because fs equals to ml equals to mu s into n or mu s into mg also n equals to mg so uh, we have r equals to under root mg square plus mu s into mg uh, whole square this is the formula and here from this formula it is also clear that if friction is absent that this term will be zero and so uh, contact force will be equal to the normal contact force so, so, this situation you have to keep in mind. Now, angle of friction. It is defined as the angle between normal reaction or normal contact and resultant of contact force or simply contact force. Okay. The here the situation is shown that this is normal uh, reaction or normal contact force. This is frictional force. When we apply the vector law, vector law of addition, that is uh, the resultant of this, this, this uh, two force will be in this direction and it is called contact force, simply, simply contact force. 
now the angle between contact and normal contact is called angle of friction so this this angle will be angle of friction here and uh, it is given by uh, if we take tan lambda then tan lambda will be equals to this line which is represented by magnitude of fs and uh, divided by this line which is equal to the normal contact so now tan lambda will be equals to fs by n equals to we know that fs equals to mu s into n and divided by n and n um, n is removed now tan lambda equals to mu s so hence lambda is equal to tan inverse mu s this is the formula for angle of friction now there is also a term angle of repose it is defined as the angle made by the inclined plane in the limiting condition of a block kept on the inclined plane it is defined as the angle made by the inclined plane in the limiting condition of a block kept on the inclined plane now if consider if uh, a inclined plane and a body is placed on this then and body is in rest on this inclined plane this this inclination with uh, with horizontal surface uh, that is this is the angle of uh, inclination this angle that is lambda and this uh, lambda will be called angle of repose that is the inclination of the inclined plane when the body is in rest then that uh, angle is called angle of repose so this will be called angle of repose now in this case because body is in rest now this mg is acting in this vertically downward direction then if this is lambda then this also will be uh, if this is alpha then is, it is also will be alpha sorry we have to call it uh, lambda this is alpha not lambda if this is alpha then this angle also will be alpha from the geometry of the figure you can prove it and uh, yeah, because uh, mg is in acting in this direction so there will be two component along in this direction mg cos alpha and along in this direction mg sin alpha now this mg sin alpha have tendency to move this body in this direction so a uh, frictional force arises in this and this is the condition of limiting friction force that is if now increase the inclination body will start to move but at this present of uh, at this present body is not moving so this at uh, the force uh, uh, friction force arise in the body is limiting friction uh, this condition should be applied now from the um, fluid diagram or from the diagram shown in the figure this force must be equal to this force because this is in rest so uh, f limiting equals to mg sin theta and now the normal reaction will be in this direction so n equals to mg cos theta because body is in rest so this force must be equal to this force now hence f limited by n dividing this to we get tan alpha or tan alpha equals to because f limited f limiting force is minus u to n and divided by n n hence tan alpha equals to mu s and alpha equals to tan inverse mu s but this is the angle of repose formula for angle of repose now again as mu s is equal to tan lambda hence tan lambda equals to tan alpha this gives lambda equals to alpha that is friction force is independent of the area of contact Second point is the friction force independent of the area of contact. So this is our uh, talk about uh, uh, contact force. Now the next uh, in next lecture we will see about the Newton's law of motion.